Greetings everybody. My name is Alparslan. <laughs> I am the coordinator of the Shunan Toplum project. Uh, in today's event, we will make presentations in English. Uh, as you see, I'm speaking English, no Turkish in this uh, session. Uh, uh, okay, we made uh, a order, as you know. First, Melissa, and uh, okay, we will handle it. Okay, I will moderate the meeting. Let's go. Uh, first of all, Melissa, you can share your screen and we are listening to you. And after the uh, presentation, okay. we can ask you some questions. We can talk. Okay. Let's start. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Mm. Uh, my topic is cultural and social anthropology. Um, it, cultural, cultural anthropology and social anthropology might seem uh, some some uh, sort of uh, the, the same with each other, but they are not actually a uh, cultural anthropology and social anthropology are different branches and like sub in in anthropology first of all first of all i'm gonna explain uh, the meaning of anthropology with the question what is anthropology um, Actually, before describing anthropology, can can I ask the audience, uh, the listeners, uh, what comes to their mind when it, when they hear the word anthropology? Uh, what comes to your mind? Uh. I think it's about um, history of some um, I can't say That's like okay. skulls this you know, science examines skulls or something to um, realize what is the races what the races I don't know Okay, uh, it's, it's, it's normal uh, uh, to, uh, to not, uh, not, not be f uh, familiar or with anthropology, but that's okay. I'm gonna explain the meaning. Um, you know, uh, uh, Positive science are grouped in uh, science like uh, chemistry, biology, mathematics, physics, uh, and and social sciences. Uh, social sciences are also positive sciences because they have they are. Is they are also uh, anyway. I, I'm gonna go with the go with the text because my English wasn't enough for the thing that I I want to say. Sorry, it's uh, anthropology is one of the commonly studied and cited is branch in social sciences and humanities humanities you know is is the science in history the etymology of the term called anthropology is derived from derived from the combination of the two ancient greek words anthropos which which basically means human and logos, which means science for discourse. Although anthropos means human in ancient Greek, Greek 
anthropology studies human as a cultural and social creature at first. Hence, humanity and human beings, human beings should be studied according to his cultural location and in the context of culture. Culture anthropologists should have a holistic frame while studying hum, human, humans and humanity. The social sciences that help anthropology, sociology, psychology, philosophy, archaeology, history, geography, ethnography, and numis. Numis is in numismatic in Turkish. Social anthropology is a subdiscipline of anthropology which studies human with his social connections, interactions, reactions, and uh, that that any sort of any sort of um, communic communication ways of communication that human beings can make with his social connections, interactions, reactions, com communications in the social in the context of social and cultural structure of the society which the individual belongs to uh, because we cannot imagine the individual without the so without the society that he he belongs to social anthropology studies cultures that people have created as systems Cultural anthropology is a little bit different from social anthropology because it's, it, it, it is more like anthropology than sociology. Uh, social anthropology is more, more close to sociology than anthropology. Cultural anthropology is a branch of anthropology which studies countless different subjects that range from variation of cultures in the world in a society society or cultural comparisons comparisons among countries while studying cultural anthropology you might need to get help from other social sciences like sociology or psychology because they are the most cited social sciences for anthropology thank you for listening to me that okay. was a good presentation thank you yeah, thank you. Um, are there any questions? I, I would like to hear if you have questions. Okay. I don't have one. Okay, okay. So um, the second one. Oh, I would like to ask one actually. Okay, Fatih. So what anthropology uh, does how helps it i mean how helps uh, how anthropology helps us in daily life uh, it, it helps us uh, uh, it helps you to to uh, know better better uh, yourself in in the in the society in, in in your society and the the culture that you were gr grown up in that you were born in it, with his, his uh, with the history history of of the society of the society that you belong to Yeah, I got gotcha. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the second presenter is Betul. I think, am I right? No, I was the third one, I guess. Who is the second one? I don't know. I guess it was Betul. By the way, then it okay. changed into someone else, but I don't know who was the second. Okay, the, it was like this. Okay. Um, if you are ready, okay, we are. We can. Yes, I'm ready. I think so. It's kind of excited. 
but I'm going to share my screen. You'll get us something to do. She wants something. What? What did you say? There is a voice of a cat. Just squeeze. Yes, you hear it. Yes, I have. We have a cat like 11 years old, and uh, he always wants something. He is not hungry, but he wants to eat. And uh, how I can share my screen, guys? Now I don't know. I think how I can do. This. There's a sh uh, share screen button uh, in the middle. Green one. Button. I pressed it, and I pressed the screen. Okay. Uh, Milsa, could you please uh, close your sharing? Okay. Uh, no. I think you are recording by yourself. I think there's problem. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Screen broadcasting by the application. Okay, so I just want to share my content, not recording. <laughs> okay, there is a share button, a green button. I pressed it. Yeah, okay. okay. So later on, I see many things like screen photos, I could drive, Dropbox. Um, screen, you can select screen and you can select the contents you want to share. No, guys, when I press the screen, it says like it started broadcasting. Okay, uh, you can just talk, not share. I can just talk? If it's okay for you. Or you can uh, uh, send it to the group. I can share it for you. Yeah, it will be nice. Okay. I'm sending it now. Or else someone can start its presentation during this time. Uh, okay, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, third one is Barfu, I think. Barfu is okay for you. Barfu, by the way, uh, this uh, mm, English presentation idea was your idea. Thank you for this great idea. Today we are talking uh, in lots of topics. We're going to talk in lots of topics. Uh, and we have a chance to make practice in English. This is a great idea. We can make uh, also speaking hours uh, every um, week, maybe. We can do uh, something like this event. OK, whatever. Yeah, we could, of course. Okay, this is powerful screen. Uh, if you are ready, we are listening to you. Powerful. I have my notes. If I look down a lot, it's just because of that, because I just forget everything. It's okay. Consistently. So let's greet first. Let's say hello. So in this presentation, I'll be uh, talking about the uh, flowers and mythological stories, which are quintessential for me and I hope they will be for you. Let's uh, start with our first flower, which is a daffodil. The flower you're seeing is a daffodil and its story uh, goes on like this. So I'm just gonna start with Narcissus. Narcissus in Greek mythology uh, was the, a son of a river god and a nymph, Lyrope, Lyrope, I guess. Uh, he and she was told that a prophecy which tells that if Narcissus fails to recognize himself, he will get old, which is a normal thing for a, a normal human being, but it's, a, it's not a good thing for a nymph, which, is, which comes from a, a divine origin. As Narcissus grew up, uh, he turned into a beautiful young man, very handsome. Yet even though everyone has an affection for him, he didn't give a this. He didn't love anything. He didn't love anyone. And um, apart from him, there was a nymph that is called Eco. We are familiar with this word, Eco. 
Echo was doomed to repeat only other people's last sounds and phrases, which is a, a whole other story that I'm not gonna talk about it now, just for now. Maybe we can do it in uh, later presentations. Anyway, uh, when Echo saw a uh, narcissist, she fell in love with him in the first sight. She followed him, followed him, uh, but due to her disability, she wouldn't be able to talk to him, speaking to him without repeating his last words. One day, a uh, wild narcissist tried to call over Eco. It may sound boundless with this story's line, but uh, it is because of lacking or missing evidence. Uh, after that, Eco tried to hold them, but went to hide desperately after being rejected by narcissists. Sadly, she faded away there. She, she's dead now, she died. And now uh, she's hiding amidst forests and its caves. And even though her body whose bones have turned into rocks is no longer there, her voice is still audible in caves and mountain valleys, which we named Echoes after her. That's its story. That's the echo that we called. It's this story. One day, Narcissus went out for a drink, but when he leaned towards the river, he became so obsessed with his image that he couldn't move with amaze. And he was speaking to his reflection, waterless and sleepless, whining about his deprivation of love of his still to the gods. He was determined not to leave his love though. She, uh, he kept his word and he faded away. He faded away too, alongside the river as well uh, as Eco. And Eco mourned for him. Even though he didn't love her, she just mourned for him. And she echoed his last words, which is farewell. And she uh, said it over and over again, saying farewell, farewell, and farewell. And when he's dead, the nymphs covered him with their hair and uh, made a funeral, but when they wanted to see his body, they only saw the flower which Narcissist returned into a daffodil. So he is now a daffodil. And that's its story, which is very touchy. And I put some pictures that was done by uh, some popular, I can say, painters. Uh, the first one is Narcissus by uh, Michelangelo, or we can say Caravaggio. And the second one is very popular, more than the first one, John William Waterhouse. Well, first one is popular too, but the, the other one is just, uh, there is an eco and Narcissus looking at himself and its reflection in the river. It's just... His, her looks to narcissists. It's just weird to see and uh, sad to see. So passing to our uh, second flower here is an animon, which is a colorful outside, but has a dark story under beneath again. I'm sorry, I'm just giving the sad ones, but I'm gonna uh, talk about it. Adonis, Adonis, our uh, character's name. Adonis in Greek mythology was the son of Smyrna who tricked her father into a sexual relationship. He tries to find his daughter when he finds out, but Smyrna pledges to the gods to alter her being, which is a Myrna tree. When she was a tree, uh, she gave birth to Adonis. Aphrodite, was enchanted by his beauty and, yes, the baby's beauty. And as he was just an infant, she took, she took and gave him to Persephone, who is a, the goddess of uh, the underworld and Hades' wife. She then refused to give Adonis back to Aphrodite, which really pissed her off, which is not a good thing to do. But, and, uh, she, yes, she then refused to give uh, Adonis back to Aphrodite and uh, due to her love for him and Aphrodite complained to his father again, Zeus, which is just a normal thing anymore. Then Zeus decided for him to spend four months with 
uh, in winter with Persephone and four months in uh, spring with Aphrodite. And uh, the um, rest of the year is just um, closed for him. And that's, uh, that's a lovely thing that, and Adonis wanted to, Adonis chose to um, spend his left time with Aphrodite. Very cute. They had two children together and together they were just happy. And this love pissed Aris off, who is uh, an, another lover of Aphrodite, which is you know, you know, the uh, normal thing for the Greek gods. And <clears throat> another, uh, yeah, I wanna say that. Another myth says that Adonis was a great hunter and this pissed Artemis off. And she sent the boar. But again, turning to our story, when Adonis encountered his, this, uh, this beast, he got defeated and died in the arms of Aphrodite. Again, he dies. Who was uh, coming to warn him? But either way, unfortunately, Adonis dies. And as Aphrodite mourns for him, her tears spring from the soil as animals which we see in the picture. And there is again a picture of Myrton that was, I guess, it's the spelling of it. The death of Adonis in the arms of Aphrodite. And there is Adonis, and there is the angel that comes for him when he died, I guess. And there is a dog. I, I wanna talk about it. I wanna talk about it. The dog uh, sim symbols, had a symbolic um, meaning. It means that uh, the a loyalty, a loyalty of Aphrodite to uh, Adonis, and the purity, of course, the purity of the swans in the back, the right. And also, there is a, a chariot, the golden chariot of the gods, which uh, whose is Aphrodite's. And here our uh, third flower, which has also a very tragic ending, again, I'm sorry, is Hyacinth. Hyacinth uh, was a, a beautiful young Spartan and he was beloved of Apollo. And also the uh, west wind of Zephyrus, maybe you heard about him, who will later be his murderer, which is a spoiler alert a little bit, whatever. Hyacinth was also into athletics, and one day Hyacinth and Apollo decided to race on throwing discus. Zephyrus no knew how attached together they were and got jealous, which is really, un really again, a normal thing for gods being jealous of everything. You know, the heroes always getting jealous of Zeus for the nymphs and other women. Continuing, <clears throat> in the game at first, Apollo started and threw the discus as strongly, of course, because he's a god and her strength is just high and high. And Hyacinthus, as he was laughing and having fun, he tried to catch the disc, but uh, to another version of the story, um, because Zephyrus blew the discus uh, and turned its path through Hyacinthus, had and the discus hit on his forehead and killed him. Even though Apollo was the god of healing, he couldn't save him. No. Uh, to show his honor for his love, he formed a flower that sprung from Hyacinthus's blood, which is, which are Hyacinths. It's again a sad story. And I have another picture to show the you know, the emotions in the story, which is from Giovanni. So let's just look a little bit. There is Apollo and Hyacinthus. There is, you know, the again, the baby figure. And there are people looking at them. Why are they looking? I don't know. But I guess he's Zeus. I don't know. Oh, they're the Satan-like figure. Uh, 
Berf, no, in the right. Sorry, sorry for interrupting, but your time is up. Uh, please okay. say your last words, and uh, you you have just uh, ten minutes. Uh, so, okay. Mm. If you you have yeah, lots of slides, are... you can share it uh, after the. Okay, well, we're just a few people and i guess i can continue with with it uh, i don't know if you if want it is so long we can uh, stop here but you uh, if it's not so long we can uh, continue it's sorry it's long long uh long. how long? <laughs> long you know i have i'm just in the second one i guess I have another three flowers. Yes. Okay, whatever. I can share them with you. You can continue with the others. Um, okay, because the... Uh, okay, I, I can't say it in English, but uh, this is the rule. We, we have only 10 minutes. Uh, you sounds. can share Sorry, after uh, all participants are speak. Oh, you can you can continue okay but but this flower is finished right i mean at least this flower is finished yeah the second one is finished okay um i thought that your sentence was cut uh, okay great so for me rules are rules but i don't know i also was very interested on the slides it was very good presentation thank you you're welcome I I never knew the flowers' names were from Greek mythology, and of course, with the most sexual stuff, maybe it makes sense at some point. No, the Greece has just so many things. The Greek mythology has so many things underneath, and the um, all infrastructure of the literature just belongs to the uh, belongs to the Greece. You know, the antique Greece. Yeah, and they're Actually, good at naming important. things as well. <laughs> uh, okay. I'd like to ask something, actually. Um, do you have a special interest in this area, or do you study such a uh, topic in university or somewhere? I'm interested in it, but um, I'm studying in literature. That's why I met uh, with Greek mythology in this era. That's why. Okay. That was a nice presentation. Thank you first. Um, and it, you know, it's night and it was like a listening lullaby, you know? So thank you. <laughs> it was a very nice one. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, okay. So I'm going to... You I actually use... found something like, no, it's not. Uh, okay, working. okay. No, it doesn't work. You're going to share it with me because um, I tried the, another option that doesn't work. Okay, I'm sharing now. Okay. Oh, you're the first um, one. Okay. <clears throat> but I will not be able to change the pages. So yeah, <laughs> I can change the value ones. <laughs> okay. And um, I would like to present today, guys, about some artworks from Love Museum, but uh, since I have a limited time, I just choose three of them. And uh, um, those are just some very valuable artworks, uh, which is found in the museum now. Uh, we can change the page. From here, I will present the Mona Lisa, Venus de Mila, and also uh, there is one wedding scene just in front of the Mona Lisa. Um, but I'd like to start with the history of Louvre Museum first. Um, in fact, it is first founded, it is first contracted in the time of the one uh, kings of the France, just to protect the city from the uh, enemies. And uh, it was first a castle. It was not a museum. It was not a collection uh, of the artworks. And uh, in fact, it is located in the, on the banks of the same river. And um, later on, there are many architectures like just to, um, to form the Louvre Museum 
its last form. And um, also from this page, I can say from the prehistoric times, we can see in the Louvre Museum many artworks from prehistoric times to the 21st century. Uh, and also in it's approximately like 35,000 uh, historical works. And also in it, there are many floors just uh, separated for, for example, Egypt history, and also the, from Mesopotamia to Anatolia, and uh, many different um, historical arts that are exhibited in it now. And it is the one of the largest art um, museums. It is not one of, the, it is the largest art museum in the world right now. Uh, we can change the page. I've... Okay, um, but from, from the other page, I would like to say also the architecture which is selected for um, its own pyramidal shape right now. It is a one architecture, the Chinese American architecture. Um, he gave the last uh, this pyramidal shape of the museum in the 19, um, if I'm not wrong, in the 19, in 90s years, like 100 years ago. And um, also, in here, what I can say. Um, we can change the page again. Okay, this is the, the Venus of Mila. It is on the French, in the French, the Venus of Mila, it is, um, but it, this sculpture is founded in the, one of the Greek islands and uh, you know, as you see, it's actually depicts the Venus, Venus, and uh, right now there is no, the arms are not, um, um, that we don't able to see them, but it is very one of the oldest Venus sculptures in the world. Uh, once it is founded in the Greek islands, one of the Greek islands, it is just moved to the Louvre Museum directly, and um, right now, between the, this um, island, which is found this sculpture, is called Mila, and uh, because of its shape is like an apple shape, and because of the Mila road comes from the name of the island, exactly. There is no relationships between the sculpture or the, <clears throat> or the, between the sculpture, uh, there is no relation just it depicts the Venus and in the museum just uh, near to that sculpture you can see many sculptures from the Roman and Greek times also and the copies of the Venus um, shapes like sculptures, Venus sculptures also you can see uh, belongs to different type of different type of um, countries. We can change the picture Um, in that slide also, I just tried to make a little explanation about the, what is the Milo, where, 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 where this word comes from. And um, yeah, we can, we can go on. Okay, the second uh, paint that I want to describe, I want to present, this is Mona Lisa, as many people know, because it is very iconic and uh, it belongs to Leonardo da Vinci. By the way, I'm too excited and my voice is kind of... Um, <clears throat> it's okay, do you hear me and everything is fine? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Um, this paint is belongs to the Leonardo da Vinci, as everyone knows. And uh, in fact, it is very famous maybe because of, I want to make a, some kind of um, questions about what makes Mona Lisa very famous. Is there someone who has an idea about it? I know, yeah, I mean, it is very famous in the world, around the world. And uh, actually it is kind of a bit weird because um, there, there should be something which makes them very special. Don't everyone, does everyone have an idea? No? Maybe I, because of her facial expressions, 
like uh, it's not much clear if she's smiling or not. Maybe because of that, you know, let's say popular conflict about this. Yeah, in fact, yes. <laughs> um, in the website, it always says like the facial expression of her the, because she also smiles. It seems like she smiles, but actually she doesn't smile. Or um, there are some maybe speculations. There are some many stories about Mona Lisa. And um, but in 19 years, if I'm not wrong, it is stolen. It was lost because of it. Maybe it's you know secret um, since. Um, it, it increases its value maybe later on. But before, uh, when the Leonardo da Vinci paints this, uh, this Mona Lisa, it was in Florence. But later on, in fact, he was assumed to give this paint to the, um, to, to the, to, they, I don't know how to say this in English. In fact, this painter, the Mona Lisa was the wife of someone, the merchant, one of the merchants in Florence. And they actually want to, uh, to Leonardo da Vinci, the one from him, to make this paint. And, uh, but later on, Leonardo da Vinci, when he moved to France, she took this, he took this picture paint with him in everywhere he goes. So maybe he also gave this portrait so much importance, maybe because of it also, he was one of the best and very well-known, famous portraits. And also, this portrait of the Mona Lisa was um, the one of the uh, very important... Um, the way how Leonardo da Vinci made this portrait was the new techniques he used when he was doing it. The way how he, she looks, the turns softly, and also the background of her, the, the curves of hairs the, and also the clothes were always like in a harmony with the backstage uh, uh, colors and backstage uh, volleys. So he was, of course, one uh, professor, professionalist, so professional. So it was very special portrait. And still also the identity of her is not clear. So we don't know where, who is she, who she is. But there are some stories like told. There was a one merchant in Florence. He was living and he just wanted to depict her or portray his uh, wife to someone. And uh, but later on, this portrait did not go to his place. So just go everywhere with Leonardo da Vinci and uh, when he moved to France Mona Lisa came with him later on one of the kings in France uh, if I'm not wrong sorry for this my less limited um, knowledge uh, he they they sell it the, the portrait to present it in the museum so in the museum we can see Mona Lisa very very small uh, dimensions but the, in front of the Mona Lisa, we can change also the page art right now. I are you there? We can change the page. Thank you very much. Um, it is the Great Sphinx of Tennis. But uh, in the Louvre Museum, the Mona Lisa, and also just in front of the Mona Lisa, there is the biggest paintings. I would like to share these paintings also in the, in the next pages. But I want to make a one short thing to say about the, this great Sphinx of Tanis. Tanis was the capital city of the Egypt in the uh, dynasty of like many on the BC before century, it means like in the 26th century. So in the Lord Museum, guys, we can see many uh, different sculptures from uh, like 26th centuries too. So it means very, very from prehistoric ages. There are some historical items. So we can change the picture. This thing is very big, by the way. And the, in the entrance of the Louvre, uh, just is the first, it was the first sculpture. Um, okay, this was the paint I would like to talk about, the wedding feast at Cana. Um, this paint is just, as I said before, just in front of the Mona Lisa. I don't know why they make this contradiction. 
I actually I couldn't find any information why they put the biggest paints in the in front of the small paints, but it's kind of good idea for me. It's not that bad idea. And the, the wedding feast at Cana depicts that one story, one um, miracle, the first miracle of the Jesus in the Bible. Um, <coughs> it was the miracle the Jesus was able to um, turn the wine into the water. And um, also this uh, paint is painted by the, one of the Venetian artists in the Venezia right now. And um, it was the, we can change the picture. Maybe I can copy some information. Um, yes. Um, was it was capable of turning the world into one into the wedding. Okay. Can we go previous slide? Just to see the sake of see the picture again. Okay. In fact, it was a one wedding scene. The Jesus was attended, attending one as a guest in this uh, wedding feast. And uh, also he was able to turn the uh, water into wine. Uh, also, it was the first miracles. And it was the story in the Bible uh, right now. Also, guys, in this paint, uh, we can see some historical figures like from Ottoman Empire, the Kanani Sultan Suleiman, also can be seen in this picture. This Venetian artist uh, put some historical figures in his paints as, a, um, as Ottoman Empire, for example, or some England uh, queen uh, also, they put in this paint. So um, also in this picture, there are like 132 guests, and uh, some kind of just two dogs, two um, birds or something. But um, yeah, it is very, uh, it, is it distinguishes itself as a biggest paint in the Lower Museum, just in front of the Mona Lisa. And uh, we can change the page. Uh, also, we can change this too. Yeah. I think that's all. <laughs> My slide was very, very limited. This one was one of the artworks, three beaches. Uh, but yeah, for, from myself, that's all, guys. <laughs> Just the three paints I would like to present today. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Petru, for this presentation. Um, You're welcome. I was very just... excited, but. It was very good. Thank you. Mm. Actually, okay. I have then... two questions. I yes. uh -huh. <laughs> I hope I can. I yeah, can they're easy. I, I just wonder if uh, the name Mona Lisa, uh, is it the real name of that woman? Or is it like a nickname? Mm. Do you have any <laughs> idea about that? In fact, <laughs> as I... From my information, it's like, I, in fact, it's not the real name. The Mona means the Mona Lisa. When we say Mona Lisa, it seems like my Lisa. Leonardo just put this name to the paint, but I don't know if it's a very correct name or not. But uh, according to websites or some kind of uh, sources, it says always like, um, uh, it is the wife of Francesco someone mm, there is also you know the Joanna I'm not sure how that's the pronunciation uh, can you go to the page of the Mona Lisa please if we have what, like 30 seconds <coughs> are, are you there yes uh... yeah if it is possible can we go to the Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa page oh ah, okay um, like... sorry oh, thank you um, yeah, yeah. It is, in fact, guys, Mona Lisa portrait has two names, like Giocondo, it's also called. Giocondo, Francesca del Giocondo, when we say mm -hmm. it's the wife of the, uh, uh, no, Giocondo, okay, uh, the wife of the Francesca del Giocondo. Giocondo is the surname of the, his, uh, her, her uh, husband, in mm -hmm. fact. 
So this name is actually was written on the Louvre Museum too. Um, but Mona Lisa, I think it's not the real name. But again, I'm not sure. I just okay. made those short explanations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I just uh, wondered which one was your favorite painting? Like, I think I don't know. Mm -hmm. Since Mona Lisa is too iconic, maybe uh, it, I really like to, to look at this portrait, mm -hmm. but I, I, they're not just my favorites. I just wanted to talk about the subject. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, Fatih, it's your turn. All right, let me share my screen. Oops, 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 you shouldn't. What did you see? Okay, now I'm gonna share again. Okay. So, my topic is difference between courage and fearlessness. When you search the word in Google, courage or fear, fearlessness, it looks like they're the same, but I, I don't agree with that. I think it is pretty different. So I would like to start it with what is fear? Yeah, by the way, it would be great if you attend as well, <laughs> interactive. What is fear to you? What, what are you afraid of? Uh, fear is... <laughs> It's a um, hard question. So keep yourself out of something because you think you're going to have some trouble. Yeah, it keeps you away from doing something, acting, being active. Uh, it keeps away from you. Like another yeah. thing, there are types of fear, fear I think. Fear for me is like uh, something that I don't want to face with, like mm. um, loneliness or mm. maybe darkness. So this one actually is it's different. It doesn't keep you away from something, but it just overwhelms with you the feeling, the mm. fear of the unknown. When will it come? It will come one day, but when? It just it keeps you away from everything not one single thing uh, not some real thing it's it may happen but it may not as well there are types of uh, fear as well uh, other uh, types would anyone else like to participate uh, or okay no not i guess like public speech have you ever tried public speech <laughs> like what i'm doing right now actually there are only five people <laughs> but it's okay it's still public speech it's online now but uh, in uh, real, it's uh, really um, hard for me uh, to make a speech on a big um, people group this is my fear actually yeah it is it feels terrible when you're speaking to thousands of people, maybe not thousands, but hundreds of people. They're looking at you, they're expecting you something big, expecting big things from you. And the eyes are actually, I put eyes here <laughs> because it's, it's the eyes of other people that makes you scared of, of talking. And there is another fear. Um, deadline have you uh, crammed the all work to the last day <laughs> like homework yes like i did today <laughs> i did the presentation last minute <laughs> yeah just like me <laughs> like i still don't have this slides <laughs> only four slides <laughs> um so yeah deadline is deadline the fear of deadline actually doesn't keep you 
away from something, it actually pushes you to do th something. Like dogs uh, try to catch you and you run faster. The faster, the fastest you can, you could ever run <laughs> when you need to. It's like you wouldn't do your homework if the fear was, wasn't there. And this fear is actually pretty helpful, right? It brings a lot of stress, of course, but it makes you do something efficient. Yeah, it gives motivation. Yeah, motivational. And I would like to talk about courage. Well, I already disagreed with the courage. Someone who has courage is not fearless, I think. But uh, first of all, what is courage? Uh, I think the difference is uh, courage, people can take risks. Uh, they know, uh, they fear there are uh, lots of potential uh, dangerous things maybe, but uh, they take risks, they think firstly, and they take risks and do something bold. And if they're Mm, successful we can <laughs> call them courage but if they're uh, failed yeah we can call them stupid maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there there is a courage of stupid <laughs> well um courage yeah uh, taking chances and acting uh, the fear uh, so Someone who has no fear can never be courage, ha can never have courage. And I don't think it is virtuous. But you would like to have someone fearless around you. Like fearless could be a soldier. You would like to, uh, you would like a soldier to be brave and have courage. Because actually it's not about dealing with something it's like critical. You have to do it. The soldier, if, oh no, I'm scared, I cannot. Uh, the, a soldier cannot say that. A soldier always has to push himself or herself, actually, around to defend his country or something. So it, if your friend is fearless, you would feel much more safe. Like, But courage, when you you don't have to make a public speech. It's up to you. You don't die because of that. But if you do it, it is good for you. So you have to take your courage and go for it. It's, this is courage. It's not about being fearless. Yeah, and there is a quote like that. Um, There's a great uh, quote. <laughs> yeah. I, I like it. Yeah, fears are everywhere around you. You cannot run away from them, but you need to face them always. Of course, some fears are inevitable. You cannot do anything about it. You don't know what may be the outcome, but you should still go for it. If you don't take any chances, you'll never su say, succeed in anything, I think. Well, that is my... Um, presentation <laughs> if anyone has any question uh why did you uh, choose this topic uh where does it come to your mind i don't know is this uh, yeah good question answer, actually but... um i had some accident bad stuff and uh, got into depression and i had to get out of it somehow and I tried to meet a lot of people to find someone good for me, someone I could learn from. So I pushed myself to meet people. I was normally a shy person. I couldn't talk to people. So, but I'm now uh, streaming online, talking to people who I don't even know, really. So the topic has something uh, some place in my heart. <laughs> that is why I chose the topic. It's good. Good to you. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. But, uh, uh, I'm sharing same 
emotions uh, so becoming a coordinator in this project uh, helps me to talk to people like in society or speech uh, or group of people uh okay any questions guys or any suggestions do you think is <laughs> <Yeah>. right <laughs> i guess oh i think it was like inspirational inspirational <laughs> yeah <laughs> like <Thank> ted talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah Yes, thank you it was very inspirational too thank you oh thank you. great <laughs> it, i think fear, fear to talk is something like most of the people experience it i don't know i also experience it and, um, and yeah just, right yes and also okay i want to add something hmm. like i think to overcome fears like in your slides, there are many good quotes, by the way. Aim to fear, let's don't aim for fears. They are very nice quotes. Yeah. And uh, because even though you fear, you always fear. I don't know, in my life, I experienced like this. I um, Fear is always in somewhere. I mean, it doesn't disappear anytime. So I think your slides and the, your presentation was too inspirational also for it. It was nice to hear from someone else too. Yeah, thanks exactly. a lot. Yeah. Also, by the way, you said uh, we are afraid to talk. That is why many people don't uh, speak English very well. They're afraid of people. They're afraid of speaking. So they don't improve, improve themselves because of that. Um, right. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, right. and also a new language foreign yeah. language we are not familiar to it not mother language so yeah and also fear sometimes happens because of we don't know enough knowledge when we don't know enough knowledge hmm. but something we tend to fear more maybe yeah. also um, yes so the fear of unknown oh okay, yeah. okay. go ahead I mean, in Turkey or in, uh, I don't know, when I was trying to learn a new language in English, for example, I had a very less knowledge in the first times. And uh, later on, I tried to improve myself more and more. And uh, <clears throat> I still say some wrong words, wrong expressions I use. But um, I mean, it is an improvement. And... Uh, it happens like with the less knowledge, the more knowledge. As you more, as you have more knowledge, you will gain less fear. I mean, yeah. less fear comes with the knowledge and experience, maybe. Yeah, and you win the experience by making mistakes. I probably made hundreds of mistakes in this slide uh, presentation, but yeah. it's fun. <laughs> not, not you. I don't know. I just talked about myself and the mistakes I made in the yeah. presentation too. So it happens. That's sorry for the mistakes. So anyway, <laughs> who cares about the mistakes? The context <laughs> is pretty clear to everyone. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it's my turn. <laughs> uh, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, my topic is the Joker. Um, the movie. I don't know if you watched or not. Uh, it's released in 2019. Um, lots of people talking about this movie. Uh, talked about it. Talking and. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it always i think because it's uh like a cult movie um it's gonna be cult movie it's my opinion uh, i like movie i like this movie uh, i didn't uh, watch it in um movie theater but 
in I watched it uh, on internet, but it's okay. Uh, I I like the movie. Uh, I watched it uh, several times. Watched it several times. Uh, sometimes uh, I I think why I'm not watching Joker and I'm <laughs> starting to watch it again. Okay. Anyway, uh, by the way, I have some notes because I'm not uh, so much ready for this presentation. Sorry for that. Uh, ah. This is Jacob Phoenix, the actor. Uh, this is Joker. Um, after watching the movie, you will respect this guy because he's a real actor. He feels and lives the um, character. Uh, he knows how the Joker feels. Uh, after releasing the movie, he won Academy uh, Award for Best Actor. Yes, he's he has an uh, Oscar. Uh, I, I love this guy. I, I didn't know this guy before Joker. I, I think uh, he's not so famous, but now he is. Uh, this is um, a scene from the movie. In some way, there are bad guys uh, around him. Uh, I want to talk about Joker, uh, first of all. Uh, the Joker, actually, his name is Arthur Fleck. Uh, he's a comedian. Uh, he's a clown, actually. He uh, He's trying to entertain people. people. Uh, but there is a problem. Uh, he has a mental illness. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm not going to give a spoiler. <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot say so much thing about the movie, but I, I'm just say something. Um, okay. Um, ah, yeah. Uh, he has mental illnesses. Uh, when he feel bad, stressful, angry. Uh, when he's not okay and happy, he starts laughing. Uh, he laughs and laughs. Uh, it's weird. Uh, in society, it's more weird because people say, what are doing? They think he's crazy. Maybe he's crazy, but uh, there's a problem. Uh, he cannot... Um, express himself in uh, around um, in in society yeah mm, in this scene uh, for example uh, in subway he starts laughing uh, when the bad guys uh, start abusing a woman he starts laughing and he got a trouble with these guys uh, yes <clears throat> Uh, this love uh, is not like the love we know. Uh, he's in pain, actually, as I said before. Uh, this is the most important thing, I think, because uh, this actor uh, is successful, because um, it's hard to act like that. He's laughing, but not laughing. He's in pain. He's sad, actually. Uh, you will understand me after you watch it. Um, this is one of the other scene. Uh, he just want to uh, talk uh, or uh, say something to a child, and uh, his mom says uh, don't bother my son like that i don't know and he's laughing but he's really sorry in the scene this is an example and um as you guess uh i mentioned uh this condition he's laughing this condition uh causes troubles for him people think he's crazy and uh they find him annoying, really annoying. Uh, they they make fun of him. Arthur's dream is to be a stand-up artist. But you know, he has a problem. This condition causes lots of problems with the society. 
he cannot get support support uh, by government. He can't use any drugs or something. He don't know what to do. He just follows his dreams, uh, trying to be a comedian. Uh, this scene uh, very popular. Uh, after subway murdering murder, uh, he starts starts dancing. Uh, you should watch this scene. Um, don't forget to smile. Uh, his mom says, don't forget to smile. Uh, she calls Arthur happy. This is his nickname. Uh, oddly enough, uh, he is not happy at all. Uh, he's not happy, but he has to smile. The movie is based on this dilemma. Uh, this is the most iconic scene in this movie. Uh, he's dancing again. Um, before he makes his uh, dreams come true. Uh, okay, I'm not trying to... I, I'm trying not to give spoiler. Um, as I said, uh, he cannot find a place in society. He cannot feel the same emotions with other people. He's lonely. He's, um, he hasn't got lover uh, or a friend, actually. Uh, he's living with his mom. Actually, there's some problems with his mom. Um, he's uh, ostrac ostracized. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, by the way, uh, in this movie, uh, the society has a problem also. Uh, there are lots of problems. Uh, streets uh, in cows. Uh, people hate each other, poor hates rich. Um, there are always murders. People do not respect, respect uh, each other. Uh, in the midst of all this, uh, you watch Arthur's struggle uh, to find himself in life. Um, he become uh, an icon with this mask or makeup. Uh, this is his new identity, uh, I think. Uh, what do you think has uh, changed in his life? Is he happy now? I don't know if you've watched it, but um, this uh, he says in the movie, uh, I used to think that my life was a tragedy, but now I realize it's a comedy. Uh, he says in the movie, uh, I would like to add that. Um, I think uh, it's important. Yeah, uh, that's all. Thanks for listening. That was a great quote. The <laughs> one before. <laughs> Have you watched the movie? Uh, I didn't. But... I didn't also. <laughs> the... I didn't. But I will after this. <laughs> you must We're watch not... it. Uh, I... I re <laughs> it's re really hard to give uh, not give a spoiler, but um, in main mainly uh, I tell you the story, but uh, I didn't tell you anything actually because you must watch it. There are lots of um, incredible scenes. It's really artistic uh, musics and scenes, um, visual uh, things. I don't know. I can't say it in English actually, but I love the movie. Uh, yeah, that's all. It's it's a it's really successful movie because uh, mm, you can see the see the uh, <coughs> mm, Joker's life, his emotions, his mm, problems. You can feel him. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's all. Someone who cannot impress himself, right? You mirror his uh, emotions and feel it, empathize it. Yeah, it's probably a very good movie. Yeah, it is probably. I didn't watch it. That is why I say probably, but yeah. Well, we can talk about it uh, later. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's Nurai's turn. Yeah. My turn. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I thank you for your listening. 
Can you see the screen now? Um, I can yes. see. Yes. Yes, you can see. Okay. So we talked about many things so far. And yeah, now it's turn, it's the turn of science. <laughs> so the topic is plant genetic engineering. Okay, we know that the DNA is the hereditary material uh, that is transferred from your ancestors to the new generations, right? This is the um, genetic background that includes the genes that creates you actually. So um, this DNA is not only in this form, this is uh, like later translated into proteins and makes you up basically. So what is plant genetic engineering? Here, um, plant genetic engineering is actually uh, the modif modification that the scientists do in the DNA of plants. So why they do this? Because uh, as you know, there are many diseases, there are many uh, stress factors in the environment, like drought stress, like um, water stress, you know, uh, like because of the climate change, as we know, uh, the temperature in the earth, it's increasing and our plants, even us, we are not uh, tolerant to this. Our plants are not ready for this. I mean, some of them, but the others, there are some others that have the tolerance or resistance to such diseases or stress. So what can we do about this? Here, actually, the scientists got their um, inspiration from a bacteria. This bacteria is um, like naturally occurs in the environment. And what it does, actually, it infects a plant and it transfers its DNA into the plant. So basically, it actually changes the DNA of that plant that it infects. So here, the gene transfer or genetic engineering is happening in nature, uh, like naturally, you know? So I know that everybody has uh, like some conflicts in their minds about GMOs, like genetically modified crops, organisms. Uh, people generally think that they are uh, dangerous for our health, but it's not actually. It's not proved actually. It's not proved so far. Uh, so what scientists do is they mimic or uh, they copy this phenomenon happening in nature uh, to the laboratory. So they use this bacteria like here. Here is the bacteria cell. And here, the bacteria has two different DNAs, okay? This DNA is a normal DNA, and this one is the circular one. This one, this actually uh, is the one transferred to the plant when it gets infected. So here, the disease, you know, here actually on the plant, uh, have you ever seen this in any plant or tree? Maybe the little one, once maybe. Okay, be careful next time. Uh, look at the trees and <laughs> try if you can find one. So actually they are caused by uh, this bacteria. So in the bacteria, actually there is a uh, disease causing agent. Like imagine a gene here. This gene causes disease in the plant. So scientists remove that gene that cause the disease. So they decided to try if they can add a resistance gene. So they, um, for example, cut the gene from another plant and they transferred it to here. And then they transferred it, this bacteria to the plant cell. So the plant is now, actually the new cells uh, emerging from the, this plant is now actually the tolerant new uh, cells. 
Okay. So here, uh, the CRISPR probably, maybe you have heard this. Um, this got the Nobel Prize, I guess, last year or two years ago. And this actually, um, like the more elevated version of that uh, gene transfer. Here, a protein called CRISPR-Cas9. This helps, uh, this helps like cutting a DNA part and passing it to another DNA in your body. It can be um, done in a human body. It can be done in a plant, an animal. So this helps us to prevent some diseases. Like maybe in your parents, you have um, like a gene that causes cancer, right? So if you, uh, like, of course, the cancer is not uh, like regulated by only one gene, but if there is a disease caused by only one gene, so you can uh, transfer or cut or get rid of this gene to prevent the disease happening in your, um, in your children, maybe. So thanks for listening. It was all from me. And I just wanted to um, inform you about the GMOs and uh, genetic engineering. This is not something to be afraid of. Um, yeah, thank you. That's all. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, you say uh, it's not dangerous, dangerous thing, but I think it can be dangerous. Oh. Why you think like that? It's, it's proven. <laughs> it's not proven. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not proven. Like it's like uh, um, last event we um, we talk about we talked about. Uh, Artificial intelligence is hmm. useful or not? Uh, is it dangerous or not? Uh, it's not proven. Okay, yes, but it can be. Uh, it's a potential. Of course, potentially there's a potential. dangerous. Fighting. There is a potential, but according to the researchers, you know, we rely on them. Uh, it's not proven, and there's no um, how to say any like anything showing that it's dangerous so far so mm. i have to add so far or yet maybe in the future there will be uh, some new discoveries showing it but so far it's safe however it's not legal in turkey yeah it's not legal to <laughs> use them <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh, it's not, it's not uh, legal to um, like consume GMOs or produce them. Uh, okay, only uh, you can get your um, uh, like permission from hmm. the government, and it has a long procedure. Oh. After that, uh, you may only study them in in your laboratory, hmm. and, hmm. and in many of the European countries, it's like that. But however, it's um like popular and accepted in the united states of america and in brazil as well yeah yeah i remember turkish farmers were pretty angry about it yeah it helps uh, allows us to create super things like perfect things exactly like it could be a perfect human as well, maybe. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah. Uh, are there any um, studying uh, uh, in Turkey with uh, CRISPR? I, I of wonder. course, yes. There, are, um, there are some studies going on, uh, like, for example, for iron um, deficiency in plants, like they try this. Yeah, there are many um, mm. studies about this. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you all. <laughs>
we all present presents our presentations and uh barfu has some <laughs> english is real uh by the way i i didn't talk uh okay i'm not talk okay barfu we, we are listening to you uh you can uh, finish your presentation Okay, just give me a second. I will open the presentation. Okay. It's been a long time. Uh, I haven't uh, speak English for, for a long time. So it's hard for me today. Yeah, yeah. There's some Discord channel that you can practice. Ah, uh, yes. You uh, said that before. And I'm in this Discord channel. Maybe you can suggest a few channels. It's like you just type English in the invitation uh, part of Discord and you join. Okay. okay. Okay, I'm just gonna end it with my uh, last one. I don't say, I'm not saying that flower because it's not a flower, it's a tree, which is called Daphne tree. So I felt the necessity to tell you a story of Daphne tree as it is tremendously tragic and unfortunate again. In Greek mythology, Apollo was making jokes about Eros, uh, the god of love, and to get his revenge, Eros released two arrows, a lead arrow that turned Daphne against Apollo, in other words, hate Apollo, and a gold arrow that struck Apollo and caused him to fall in love with her. Because of the impact of the arrows, Apollo started to follow Daphne, who wished to remain virgin till her death. She hated him, though. She started to reject and escape from him. Daphne, as she was restless, pleaded to gods and to free her from Apollo. So the river god Peneus turned her into a laurel tree. Apollo even then used his healing powers to make the laurel tree evergreen without fading away in favor of his eternal love. In other version of the myth, Daphne killed herself to escape from Apollo and um, his actions against her and you know, the uh, rape and stuff, and turned into a laurel tree, which means Daphne. I know we get a bit uh, depressed and sad, maybe, uh, but everything has another side, everything has its darker side, and uh, even flowers, which seem colorful and beautiful and pure, have darkness underneath, and uh, that, was, that was all from me. Thanks for attention and time. Thank you again. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. You're